China is reeling under a severe outbreak of COVID at the moment after the government abruptly lifted its three-year-long strict curbs due to widespread protests. The country, which birthed the disease at the end of 2019, is trying to hopelessly cope with overburdened hospitals and crematoriums as bodies pile up. Understandably, images from China have triggered panic across the globe. In India, testing has been ramped up at international airports, mock drills have been held across the country's hospitals to check readiness, and Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia has personally chaired COVID review meetings all week. India also has a new booster vaccine, Bharat Biotech's Incovac, which is the first indigenously developed nasal vaccine available on the COVID platform. The precautions taken are prudent considering the devastation the virus has caused in the past, but there is also a lot of panic circulating on social media about a new variant and the rumour that COVID has become more deadly. In this episode, I will try to decode the science behind what is happening in China. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Since the initial outbreak in 2019 in China's Wuhan, the world has seen multiple repeated waves of COVID-19 infections over the past few years. Most of these were driven by particular variants. The one that everyone knows about and caused widespread havoc in India mid-2021 was called Delta. The third wave in India, which saw a large number of cases but relatively fewer deaths, was caused by the Omicron variant. When news of the COVID surge in China broke, there was fear of a new, more deadly variant having emerged in the country. Until recently, China had remained successful in containing the spread of the disease. This was largely attributed to its authoritarian zero-COVID policy. The country had very strict lockdowns and mass quarantines right from the beginning. China was also one of the earliest to launch its vaccination programs. But these same factors that kept most of the population free from COVID may have been the very ones that left the population vulnerable to the newer variants of the virus that was already circulating around the world. This week, Chinese authorities submitted some 25 new genetic samples from Beijing, Inner Mongolia and Guangzhou to GZ, a global database where scientists from around the world uh, share coronavirus sequences as a means to monitor mutations. The sequences revealed no new variants. All the samples belong to variants that were already circulating, according to experts quoted in a news report by Bloomberg. Before this, only 30 sequences of SARS-CoV-2 collected since October this year were from China. In a recent article, two reputed Indian genesis, Vinod Skarya and Bani Jolly from CSIR's Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology in Delhi, explained that the Omicron sublineages that were found in China include BF7, BF5 and BA275. And also one genome that belongs to the lineage known as XBB. BF5 and BF7 were actually first detected in January this year in France. It has since then been detected in India in May and July this year respectively. BA275 was first detected in India as early as December 2021. The lineage XBB, which is a recombinant between Omicron sublineages BA2101 and BA275, has also been previously detected in early 2021 in multiple countries in Asia, including India and Singapore. Now, recombinants are formed when two variants end up exchanging large fragments of their genome. This can occur when two variants infect the same host cell. Recombination is common in SARS-CoV-2 virus because of the way the RNA viruses copy genomes. During replication, the enzyme that these viruses use can end up stitching together bits from different variants. Earlier in February, UK had reported a Delta and Omicron recombinant. But although XBB has been detected in over 30 countries, it has not been linked to an increase in new cases so far. 
However, it has now become a dominant variant in many countries seeing an uptick in infections including the US which is why experts suggest that countries actively monitor the prevalence of XBB and its lineages. According to Scaria and Jolly, more than the variant itself, the epidemiological factors and social factors may be at play in China. During the Omicron wave, a large number of people were infected with the virus across the world, which made them relatively immune to reinfections from subsequent subvariants. On the other hand, China's population was largely protected because of its zero COVID policy. The population is thus immune naive to Omicron. Basically, the immune system of an average Chinese person is, did not encounter the new COVID variants. And Omicron, which is a fitter, more transmissible variant, can easily infect them. Along with this, the country also has a high population density. Both together make it very easy for the virus to spread unchecked. China's vaccine program, although rolled out much earlier than the rest of the countries, had a relatively low uptake. Official figures suggest that as of July this year, 89% had received two doses and only 56% of the eligible people had received a booster dose. Research has shown that vaccine-induced immunity can wane somewhat after a year. Without a booster, almost half of China's population remained vulnerable to COVID. Experts also suggest that since Chinese authorities had managed to keep the disease at bay while other countries suffered through multiple waves, the population in China became more confident in their government's ability to curb the disease. And as a result, they stopped taking personal precautions like masking up and avoiding booster doses. A BBC report suggests that Chinese authorities have been portraying the coronavirus outbreak as a foreign problem, blaming international travellers for bringing the virus into China. That perception took hold and made the public careless about the booster dose. Now the question arises as to how concerned we need to be. The virus has taught us that it is always best to be vigilant. Although most variants detected in China's recent surge has already been detected in other countries, it remains important for Indian authorities to continue to monitor new variants to ensure that our vaccines and treatments are effective. Research needs to continue to adapt to the changing nature of the virus. The virus can lay dormant in animal populations for months and evolve to be fitter, and then jump back into the human population. So we must also monitor wildlife for viruses. Now changing mutations does not change how the virus spreads. So personal level interventions like wearing masks in closed public environments and taking precautions when one falls sick will go a long way in preventing mass outbreaks. That's all for this week. I wish our viewers a very happy new year. Stay safe and do continue to follow us on social media for the latest news updates.